Salut, mon ami. Ah, ça nous n'aime. Ça va? Ah, ça va très bien aujourd'hui. Merci. Aujourd'hui, c'est incroyable parce que je joue la arena et au air. Anyways, guys, that's a little bit of the French practice for me. New name here, playing my favorite game, Watch Your Realms on the Free to Please, Free to Play series. I don't practice my French often enough. However, what I was attempting to say is today's a wonderful, incredible day because of AOE Arena playing it. And I'm about to get to Plat 3 as soon as I unpause this. I didn't know for sure, obviously, if I could take this team. And you'll see who I was against. And it was a bit rough. But uh, sometimes you just take your chances, man. There was 14 points for victory. And boom! Day 32 on a free-to-play account, Plat 3 in the arena. Very fortunate to have received Comet and Valkyra. They've helped my account immensely for non-free-to-play heroes. Okay? And now you're starting to see, you know, there's like a Boreas trend up here. And there's no way I'll take out an Ardia and a Khan and a Yuridin here, okay? But let's quickly go to the quest before I get bumped out and pick up the Plat 3. I doubt I'll finish in Plat 3 at the end of the reset day. But I want to get this Divine Crystal out of the shop. Come on now. Uh, oh, it's 800. I can't afford it. It's a shame, but it's going to be there and available for the next little bit. What is here, though, is this legendary skill crystal. So if I pick this up, that would give me six. So what would you do? Let's see how much legendary skill powder I have. I have none. I have ten. Okay. These divine, this one, I wouldn't use it for another week. And come reset, I'm going to get bumped down into plat two. And I think I get like 500 points. I'll tell you what you do is you don't buy anything if you're patient because this is already going to be unlocked as soon as I come in on after reset where I can earn my way back up to this divine and still have the currency to afford it. But for me on the free to play account and the experience that I have in this game, I'm buying the legendary skill crystal as soon as I can. I never want to run out of these legendary skill crystals when I have powder available. You might have done and decided to do something different for yourself. For me, it's all about being able to put the skills into the heroes as soon as I can. And I'm telling you right now, if I face any of these Boreas teams, more than likely it's I'm dead on the first or second wave because they'll just plop them down, boom, dead. With this Laurel, not a chance, right? So Let's make sure so that you're aware. I think I said, what is it, day 32? Yeah, day 32 on the sign in there. 32. Uh -huh. And this account, also today, I almost hit, let's see here real quick in the best records, on auto, I almost hit 6.5K blood on Nightmare 3. I just didn't do anything different ever than I normally do, except I six-starred my Wrath, and I gave him a six-star promotion, and he's... One awaken away from becoming super wrath. And if you're not familiar with what I mean by that, at awaken five, wrath, when he does his heavy blow, he, he will heal for 30% of the damage done. If you don't know what heavy blow is, I'm going to show you. In the uh, ultimate here, okay, he's got an auto cast. So he inflicts burning, he does all sorts of damage or whatever, okay? And he's just constantly smashing people and he does like um, a second hit when he does a critical hit and then you have his uh, soul basher here it guarantees when you trigger this it's a critical hit okay whatever happens critical hit so i'm forgetting where i need to find that uh ability here but anyways trust me okay when wrath does his uh a5 work for you you'll be able to plop him down there it is soul basher I'm such a silly goose yeah, so every four attacks, it's right there. I apologize. I'm, I'm a little excited about that plat three. But every four attacks now, Wrath is going to heal for 30% of the fourth attack. So as soon as I can get the powders, I'm going to fill his skill up here. And it'll be very rare that my Wrath will die in the content I'm currently in. So I forget if I'm set up correctly or not for it with the heroes in the correct year. But... Uh, let me make sure here on Idril, and then I'm going to show you. I've unlocked, I think it was two or three days ago, the final stage, stage eight, 
in the uh, basic trials. So I'll take Volca's gear for Idril here. I think it's good enough because it's on power of dominance. But this is big, okay? When you come into your uh, Pantheon, like I don't know where you are obviously on your Pantheon, but once you hit level 40, it starts requiring the epic uh, insignias here, okay? The shelter insignia, you need the epic ones. And I don't ever want to have to assemble and pay from these blue ones. And it also takes you longer because it takes two blue to make one epic. So you're also looking maybe at these stats. Like that 18% rage regen, that really helps. And a couple of videos ago, I forgot to mention that the 6.5 healing effect affects the heal that Oleg gets using the North's Will artifact. Okay, This heal effect affects any hero anywhere in the entire game, including when you have Volca deployed and they're getting her passive heal. Okay? So you come into your raids here. You look at your faction trial. I don't know where yours is, obviously. But mine's pretty motoring along here. I'm almost at 200 stars, all right, on 32 days in. I can't do stage 10s yet, not, at least not on Northerners. Northerners smokes you. It hits hard, okay? And I don't have a mall. Without a mall, I don't know how to do it very well. Or a Nocturne, okay? I just don't have the roster yet. My Infernal, it's not very good, but I just picked up Pyrus. So that's going to help. And I might. I just might be able to do something in piercers. I'm not sure. Okay. Like picking up Brienne made it a potential for me now. All right. And coming through here at the cultist, I think I can pick up a few stars. I should be able to get four more stars at least by the end of this, this rotation. But now you're seeing like everywhere is almost epic insignia farm. And as soon as you can get farming, the insignia is all epic that you're breaking them down. The sooner you get all your, pantheon stuff up to level 40 and then you're just farming epic and you're getting all sorts of awesome stat boost so on my main account i think it's at uh 211 or 214 or something but anyways it has 38 percent rage regeneration that is insanely massive every hero in the game that you deploy anywhere has 38 percent rage regeneration boost anytime you put them down and you'll notice, you'll watch uh, excellent content creators and wonderful human beings like Fastidious. And he'll mention it where he'll forget to look at their Pantheon and he'll do something so easy on an account takeover. And he'll be like, man, that's like 30% rage regen. And he'll look and it's like 31. Because you start noticing how much faster certain abilities are coming up like Comet on his ultimate. When you start getting like 25% rage regen, you don't necessarily need an Esotericist Lord anymore to use Comet effectively in Gear Raid 1 because his Rage Regen is so much higher. You notice these things. So I'm not going to show you how to do this on non-Power of Dominance, non-Auto. Okay? What I am showing you is how I always have an AoE Mage placed on this tile next to this uh, Magic Torrent Zone thing. And it amplifies the damage, okay? So you can get like 15% increased attack. So I obviously, I'd start my Comet there. And he faces to the right. He wipes out all those big bastards with the shields, all right? So I'm going to run it again with you. And you'll see again how strong Valkyra is because she does AoE magic damage. And I love the idea of this stage as well because as soon as a wave comes... It doesn't matter if these guys are still on the board of the boss. As soon as you kill these two mobs, the next wave would spawn from these side spawns or wherever the foot soldiers are going to spawn in from. And I'm a big fan of that in the game. I, it just saves you time. It's a quality of life thing. You can see the heroes, they're not able to kill me. I wish they would spawn, you know, on all the gear rates. It would just make it save you so much time. But again, if you pay attention, okay, Comet... He's going to die here. Doesn't matter if the boss is alive or not. As soon as these three soldiers over here are dead, these ones will spawn in immediately. Okay. So even if you don't kill them on time, they still spawn, right? So boss dies here. Nothing's going to come until this mob here is dead. That abomination is fighting. Okay. That's the delay. So. Once I get a few more gear sets and some skills into Abomination and other heroes, 
I'm going to alter this because it should already be finished. All right. So Abomination kills this guy. These two die. The next one spawns immediately. That's just a little hint for you in case you're not familiar. If you're doing basic stage eight and you're like, it takes so long, the faster you can set it up after on power dominance for your auto so that you're killing those spawn from the vertical spots, the faster you'll get all three. You can get this done. I do it on my main. It's less than three minutes total to do all three on auto. Okay. And the comet here, his curse that bounces is why you're seeing him able to hit these targets that are like, you know, way beyond him. So I don't know a better hero. I use Comet as well on my normal, like my main account, and I stick Boreas down here. And this boss is already dead. Like right now, the boss is almost dead on my main account. But for 32 days in on a free to play, I can't argue, man. Like I'm almost able to do a Pantheon upgrade every two days because I'm using epics. I'm always getting the stage three shelter insignias, the epic ones. I don't have to dissemble or uh, assemble from the rares ever again. And if you can get yourself, it's worth it. If you think like I'm close to being able to three star stage eight, try it. Try it a couple times every day, mess around with gear, mess around with placements or whatever. And as soon as you get this done, man, the game, again, you're getting so much faster compound interest. The game always has compound interest on the investment of your faction trials and your Pantheon bonus. But the sooner you're able to get up to, you know, Pantheon 140 instead of, you know, 120, the next day, nothing, next day, nothing. Every three days you go up one. It's not nearly as noticeable. So you see here, I only have 11. I can't upgrade anything with 11. I just did an upgrade yesterday with this. But I want you to see, because I forgot to do this like when I first set up that auto, the stipulation to three star. Okay, It says you have to deploy three mages. If you look over there on the right, it says deploy three mages. You don't have to keep them on the board. You just got to drop them and take them off. So I just snuck a laurel in there and pulled her out once. Doesn't matter if they die. As you're noticing here, it just says deploy three mages. Don't let anyone lie to you and convince you incorrectly. When any of the faction trials say the word deploy, that means you have to put them on the map, not just in the lineup. They have to be deployed on the map. They don't have to hit anyone. They just have to be deployed once. You can retreat them. It counts. Now, when we come into the Pantheon bonus again, down at the bottom, all right, just for the final reaffirmation of how important it is all right see how i'm almost right it's i'm a few away so i still have to dismantle these epic ones and to look at that it's twenty-seven thousand gold so i believe it's the same cost to assemble them the other way you don't want to keep paying all that gold you know to get something done in this game so if i'm fortunate tomorrow i'd be able to pick up Let's see, there's an Esotericist trial. So no, in two more days, I'll be able to get my Pantheon bonus up to 118. And let's see, I forget it as well. When you go into the event tab of it, so at 120, it says enhances the quality of whatever this uh, dragon is going to give you. It's not much, okay? You'll get like 5,000 gold or whatever. But, you know, it's every day it's something. But picking up 50 diamonds and that experience boost, it's always nice, all right? So again, my... Uh, Artifact material rate is on farm for stage 18, but I haven't attempted gear rate 219 yet. I think I'm going to wait until I A1 Volca. It would have been nice to get it done, obviously, long before, but I'm like, you know, I think uh, three days away because you get the Volca at 105. Okay? I'll get my A5 Wrath on Tuesday, right? Because this will be the Monday up to 99, and then 102 is Tuesday, and then Wednesday is A1 Volca, and I'll get the Volca Polka in full effect with DJ Dolores and her fat beats, and you'll see gear A219, no issue. And you'll see down here, I'm you know a million above on the battle power. It's not an issue whatsoever there. So I hope that everybody had a great day. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. I'll show you again. I did my best to uh, to pull Lust on a free-to-play account. Yeah, I didn't 
obviously get her. Otherwise, you'd see her on my account. I'd probably be happy. But I'm okay with that. Doesn't matter to me. Getting to plat three within, you know, within 35 days. I'm so happy about that. So now the last thing I need to do is hit Overlord. And that one, that's a bit tricky, obviously. Once I hit Overlord in this game, I believe I'd also be geared enough and skilled up enough that I'd be starting to mess with hard Void Rift and probably Gear Raid 320 will be my first 20 that I'd be able to accomplish. It might be Gear Raid 2, depending if I get broke here or like a Regulus or something. So this was New Name, playing my favorite game, Watcher of Realms, Abiento.